How's it going, everyone? Wayne the Unknown here, and welcome to another episode of Geeking Out, where we basically discuss everything nerd and geek related. I am doing a new segment now called Nerd Fact Friday, where we basically discuss stuff about your favorite movies, video games, TV shows, comics, etc. that you may or may not know about. I'm joined here by young Phil of the Distance Dirty Podcast, who this would be his second appearance on Geeking Out. How's it going, everybody? Uh, uh, young Phil here. Always ready for a good time. And I'm joined once again by, you may know him from the Cosplay Contact series, Brian Montijano. Hey, what's going on? Pleasure to be here. This is his first appearance on Geek and Outlier. We're also joined I'm by... so excited! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> We're also joined here by Brandon, Brian's son. How are you all doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. This is the first time I've been on a podcast, so this ought to be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, don't screw up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no promises no pressure nope. so basically no pressure. No pressure. i i invited all these guys on here to basically nerd out and talk about stuff that you know as mentioned stuff we may or may not know with so i guess i'll go first so i imagine of course you guys all seen back to the future right oh absolutely. yeah absolutely. all three of them in the theater multiple times like I said, I'm an elderly man, so that I was in my late teens when they came out. So, <laughs> so well, actually, the first one was early, but anyway, still. So this is something I learned a few years back, and I'm sure you guys know that the, the creator of Back to the Future originally pitched the idea to Disney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the Bobs. <laughs> Bob Gill and Bob Zemeckis, yep. Yeah, but uh, they turned it down because, you know, the whole uh, Marty's mom hitting on him scene and everything. Right. Yeah, and I, I remember reading about that and being like, oh, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Disney doesn't want, you know, weird incest on there. We're, we, <laughs> we can, we can kill animals, but we don't want to show a mom trying to hit on her son. Yeah, but it's so weird because back then Disney still had like their Buena Vista and they owned, was it Viacom, you know, the and VCA, which was the porn company and stuff. I mean, Disney had their fingers in a lot of different distribu distributors. Literally speaking. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. It's odd that they didn't oh release it under that because they had some very questionable stuff. But I think right around two was when uh, Eisner was getting ready to go in the box mm -hmm. and right. wanted to family friendly the entire company and, okay. uh, you know, sanitize it a little bit because he's the one that, you know, like pulled some of the rides and changed like the people mover and things like that around that time. Got rid of all the uh, <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So remember, they went into production in what, 1984. So, I mean, like the or was it 1983. I think it was uh, in 83 because they shot like 90% of the film with Eric Stoltz. Right. Who, if you see that test there. footage, he was like leaden. Terrible, man. <laughs> it, it, it's not his fault. He's a great actor. It was just not his his thing. Wait, the energy he was, wasn't he, there. Wait, he was originally be Marty McFly? Oh, no, dude. For 90% of the movie, film. Yeah, the entire movie was filmed with, with him. To a point where some of the scenes in Back to the Future in the original movie are still Eric Stoltz. Yeah, it's from like behind and side head. shots and stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, just because it didn't make sense for them to go and reshoot the shots, they were like, okay, we're just going to keep these because you can't tell the difference. But uh, the biggest issue that Zemeckis had with uh, Stoltz was that he took everything way too seriously. So, like, he he was just like, you know, he was like, well, what's my motivation? And, uh, and like, oh, took, method acting. He it, really he really was doing, like, uh, hardcore method acting for Marty McFly. Okay, and, to be fair to Eric, though, dude, he just came off a mask. You know, yeah. and oh, so that Eric Stoltz. Yes. yes. So okay, what he said, Matt's like, okay, I've seen that. Wow. That. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you got a guy sense. that just poured his heart and soul into a very. And he was like, portraying a real person, too. He, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a very heartfelt, very emotionally draining role. You know, you're moving into something that's dealing with, well, at the time, considered semi-serious subject matter. Because, you know, Zemeckis wasn't really the comedy guy he became. So, you know, he's probably stuck wow. in that rut. Fun yeah, fact right then, there. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, the, the replacement scenes and stuff, like uh, what Phil was just saying, it's kind of like uh, the, the back shot of uh, Hicks going down the stairwell and Aliens is still James Remar because ah. he they, they couldn't reshoot some of that. And, you know, he left because of his uh, his habit. But that's a lot more common than you think. And funny enough, right around the same time period, too. You know, because it's like... Jeez, I can't you know, imagine. Yeah. I can just can't imagine... Um... Michael oh, the J. footage is there. Mike, the, the, I can't. The, I just can't imagine Michael J. Fox having to redo all that. I mean, they and the other thing was because he was filming Family Ties during the day. Oh, that's and right. Going and filming Back to the Future at night. So I mean, like he he wasn't getting any sleep in, in between yeah. all these scenes. They had to do what they had to do to get everything working the right right way. I'm, I was bringing up that it, you know they were filming in '83, like. 
if that's where they were when they were pitching to Disney, like Disney went and did their full reconstruction around like what 84, 85. So it was like, yes, something like that because the the contract deal with with Fox after Stoltz, Stoltz got kicked out of the box because he originally wanted it. They're like, no, you can't have him because he's contracted, and that's where that okay. He has to be here during the day, and then you can have him at night. And that poor kid was being shuttled, what, in a station wagon, he said, sleeping on the front seat for like 10 minutes at a time because it was like, right. what, one end of the lot to the other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh, Wayne, there's a great set of behind-the-scenes stuff on the Ultimate Collection Edition. And uh, the Bobs go into that, and uh, some of it has early interviews with Michael J. Fox. But, yeah, it was, in it was an insane shoot. Yeah. And then to do two and three back-to-back, -back, uh, right. what, a couple years later? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Mean I remember looking at another thing. Speaking of that, in 1988, originally, um, Brad Dorf was only supposed to play Charles E. Ray. And you guys seen Archer, right? Yeah, of course. Jessica, oh, yeah. Jessica Walters, who voices Archer's mom, was going to do the voice of, Ch of the Chucky doll. But due to oh, really? But yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's something I found out. But apparently, due to negative test screening, uh, they brought back uh, Dorf to re uh, dub all the vo uh, redub all the Chucky lines. I did not know that, and I saw Child's Play in the theater also. You know, so I mean, that was that was a big one when it came out. And then Homeboy that wrote it and has been in has his hand in all of them up to the more recent, even the remake. But uh, I, that's a new one on me. Yeah, no, I, 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 I previously found that out when watching a uh, a Kill Count review on Child's Play, and apparently, according to uh, uh, Don Mancini, Chucky, he said that Chucky would have sounded quote unquote gay. Well, you know, it would have lost a lot of the menace. Brad, first of all, is one of the creepiest. Same without Brad Dorf. Oh no! <laughs> Name a role Brad's been in that wouldn't that wouldn't be <laughs> you know, even Wood, Fatal Gr Beauty, the, where Wood he played Tom. that psychopathic drug dealer in uh, with Whoopi Goldberg. It, it, you know, he also played I can't... one flew over the cuckoo's nest too in seventy five oh, with Nicholson. Yeah, Billy, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like I said, name a role that that cat's been in. That would be Remember remotely the same without him. He play, played in the scientist in um, the 1998 uh, alien film. Like the dude yeah. plays a lot of creepy roles. Uh, yeah. I guess m moving on, uh, <laughs> Phil, you got any fun nerd facts that you people may, may or may not know about? So, so I was talking about uh, off, off screen here, but I, I didn't get to do the full story, but the origins of um, – of kind of like your Fortnite and your and your PUBG and Battle Royale games in general, right? Uh, so it goes back. Uh, there's this game that we used to play called Arma. It was a PC game, uh, and Arma essentially was like a uh, it was like a military training game. We so we used it in the army, uh, and a patch for it came out called DayZ, and DayZ was like a, a zombie survival yeah. uh, game where the idea was. You know, um, you survive, you kill zombies, and after a while, it was almost like how The Walking Dead turned out. They were, like, people colonized and kind of banded together, and they would, like, find an abandoned bus, and they would, like, group up together and, and uh, fight zombies together. After a while, people started, uh, like, essentially figuring out that you could, at like, attack another rival, like, group of people that were trying to survive. And you could raid them for all of their guns and all their gear and everything, right? And then basically you had to start over from scratch all over again. And it, and it would piss you the hell off, right? So fast forward, PUBG was a clone of all the things in DayZ that we hated. Right? It was essentially everything you hated about DayZ uh, or that what, what people did in DayZ where they would like shoot you and raid you and do all this other stuff. Um, they they basically made that into uh, a game, but added protocols to it where it was like, okay, well, you at a certain amount of time, it you know the the circle slow uh, uh, gets smaller, and then you have to go and eventually all the teams kill each other off or they fight in the end. Uh, but it all originated from uh, this Daisy mechanic that we all hated. This is why I don't like battle royale games. <laughs> it, uh, I have my reason. <laughs> yeah, like my reasoning for not liking battle royale games was because everything we hated about uh that that mechanic that people did they made into its own game and then of course everything after that was people uh cloning that right so PUBG was its thing and then Fortnite was a a hit uh which again i call minecraft with guns i'm not yeah. a fan of it right? you're not i mean you're not wrong they recently came out with a uh for Fortnite. they came out with a no build mode for Fortnite. i saw that and, and and that would kind of make me more interested in it but again it's it's 
dealing with all of the squeakers that are like you know living in, in that game mm. uh fun fact kids if you don't know what a squeaker is it's a kid who hasn't developed yet that squeaks at the top of his voice when he's <laughs> see your mom your children to shoe get good your mom get good i played that like that one or, with my sister my... and i that's all i heard and i was like nope uh Nah, I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah, I remember about. Halo 2. Here Dude, I totally kid. pwned you, man! There were some yeah, little exactly. kids like, go easy on me! And Halo 2 is like, are you sure you're in the right? Yeah, you're not playing the right game. Oh, and, yeah. oh I got a fun fact, fun story about that, man. Uh, I was uh, in a lobby, uh, and we were all we all remember the Call of Duty lobbies, right? Where sure. they yeah. talk to each other, right? Oh, yeah. Had, had this kid in there. Um, I was probably about I don't know, 18, 19, right? So I was already, I was a kid myself and I was kind of an asshole. So, uh, <laughs> you know, this kid is just sitting there uh, talking about, no, and I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. And, and his, I guess his older brother is in the, the, is in that lobby too. And he's like, dude, don't talk to my little brother like that. And I'm like, your little brother is how old now? This game is uh, rated for, uh, rated mature, which means he needs to be at least 16. Rated for, rated M for men. <laughs> Right now, yeah, <laughs> so so your little twelve year old brother that's not supposed to be hearing cussing. Sorry, he's gonna get exposed to it. You shut the uh, fuck up, man. I remember being I remember being like eleven playing Halo two and just hearing all this like, but you know that was that was normal for online gaming back. Yeah, then. you know, but realistically, for the first six to eight months, Halo two was pretty solid because not everybody could afford high speed internet, so you had a lot of adults and guys my age, you know, because what I was twenty two-ish or so maybe a little bit older when that one was really getting big so it was a lot more mature uh people and then when the price for cable modems went bottomed out and became right. reasonable that's when it started getting bad because <laughs> prior to that you know like even playing half-life or counter-strike you know there was a lot of people on dial-ups and stuff and that's when it was you know a little bit more of the, the norm but there was that that nice calm period when you were only playing with people that could afford it and were taking it seriously. And the same thing with the first Call of Duty and a few of the others. Because otherwise, yeah, every freaking menu is exactly like you're saying. And I, I would have Brandon play with me, but I'd mute all the, my, the, the speakers because <laughs> it was just like, come on. And I was very selective of who we played with because, you know, I got my six-year-old kid playing with me. He's like, no, this, sh this shit ain't happening. Yeah, but, Or you do what we did and you just do LAN parties. But I mean, like that was... That's what it ended up being or just with yeah. one or two specific people that I, that I knew. And, and I would always tell them, if you see this person online, you can play with them. If you see Uncle Jake on there or Uncle Lance, which are guys that I worked with, but that's how he knew him, that's fine because they'll make sure you're okay. Because otherwise, yeah, it, it just was. Dude, get good. Kill yeah. yourself. Oh, God. That's <laughs> it's, it's a lot. It's, man. Yeah. I, uh, I don't mind some of the you know online play, but I'd rather play with like one of you hogs or something like that than any pickup. Uh, that's one reason one of the few reasons like even playing wow i kept to myself for a long time and i would occasionally do guild stuff because i just i i, I don't like people mm. uh, a person's cool people suck that's <laughs> I, <Absolutely>. you know, <laughs> you know uh, and, as, as uh cory taylor said uh people equal shit yeah you know? yeah pretty much <laughs> Move, <laughs> moving on brian what are some fun facts that people may or may not know or we may not know may oh geez know? gonna put me on the spot i'm trying to think of all kinds of fun stuff well with like um he was talking about like with back to the future and i mentioned aliens and, and uh and some of those those recasts and everything if you look up some of those those films in the 80s who who are all potentially uh going to be cast in certain parts and everything uh and then like jump forward to alien three with uh michael bean and a uh, little carrie hen that was supposed to be in there getting kicked out of the box and uh still got their uh a higher paycheck for michael bean for alien three than he did for aliens for a single image right which yeah i mean that that's a pretty common thing but there was a lot of that kind of stuff going on there because these studios were just losing their goddamn mind you know because oh hey this is popular and like cameron writing on the board to make aliens just put an s and turned it into a dollar sign, <laughs> you know, for his sequel pitch. 100%. You know, that was probably one of the smartest marketing moves that he did. Oh, oh my God. I, yeah. How do I do the sequel? Uh, we're not going to call it Alien 2. <laughs> Aliens. <laughs> exactly. With a dollar sign. Yeah. Right. So it was, it was weird because, you know, they wanted some of these people for these roles that had moved on. And, uh, you know, you know, Ghostbusters 2 is another example where after the cartoon, 
the studios are like, oh my God, we got to make another movie. And they're like, we're all doing our own thing. I don't want to be involved in this stuff, but you can't recast. So you readjust. So what I'm getting at is like, you know, there's a lot of those little fun recasts, what could have been, what was going to be all through there. Um, and, and Cameron had his hand in a lot of stuff early on too. And that's where we got the, the organic web shooters for Spider-Man and stuff. This is all happening by, I would say probably 87 to like 93. That was a really crazy period because uh, Columbia was getting bought out by Sony. Uh, Marvel was trying to do that Marvel now, and they were trying to get those movies out. So, I, I mean, not any one specific fact, Wayne, but just there's there's a wealth of that kind of stuff in there if you go look hard enough. Well, and, I, and it's I, interesting I, who I got paychecks it. for doing nothing. I, oh, I, God. I, the movie, I, just the movies that went into the vault, right? Like, so there was like the Fantastic Four movie. Oh, that's the... such a good movie, too. <laughs> I'm, well, what about that Justice League movie, man? They, oh, uh, the one that was, was supposed to come in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the, 90s. the Roger Corman fan film. I got to see a work print version of it at a convention in Vegas, and it still had the time bomb shit on it. But because uh, a woman I worked at the comic book store had gotten a hold of it, and then she brought it into the con, and we started watching it, and I was like, "What? Where is this? Where is it? We never got nobody got to see it, and then I found it you know, for free later on. But everybody gave it their all. All. They were making it never told that it was going to be canned. Oh, we're talking about the Roger Corman, uh, 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 fantastic four movie. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I was just looking. Yeah, that was, a, that was actually a, that would, sounds like it would have been a good movie. I saw, I remember, I remember seeing pictures for it and that costumes looked spot freaking on too. Like they were coming they, accurate. Well, about 90% of the budget went to Ben Grimm, believe it or not. That suit was pretty good. Oh, you're, <laughs> are, you, are you talking about the, uh, Okay, we're okay. The nineteen ninety four yeah. uh, Fantastic Four film. Yes. Okay, and I know what you're talking yep. about. Yeah, I remember seeing the, yeah. the suit. Like the suit was really well made. I remember actually uh, for the time Retro Wormhole had that on DVD. The movie. Uh, yeah, it's all pirated. It, it's all illegal bootlegs. But yeah, because yeah, that was never officially released. Just like yeah, just like you're no. saying about the the Justice League film that was supposed to come out in the '90s, you would have seen. Yeah. Uh, Green Lantern, um, Martian Manhunter. Manhunter was in it. Uh, I I, so I watched that movie, uh, but in Spanish. I remember seeing uh, how uh, Dan Lin, who was apparently going to be the DC uh, Kevin Feige, he was even wanting to say, you know, how that, you know, how that would have been their, you know, mar their quote unquote Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, and, and it, it was like practical effects too. So I mean, like you know, you think like '90s practical effects, and that's basically what that movie was. Man, that would have been cool to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, you know, there's there's a lot of those around then that were. Uh, there was that one X Men film that actually was what less than half a step of being made that had Jean Claude Van Damme as Nightcrawler. You had Mel Gibson <laughs> cast. Oh yeah, I'm Mel sorry. Gibson was cast as Wolverine. There was a whole bunch of Arnold Schwarzenegger was supposed to play Colossus. I mean, they had this dream casting, and Jeez. there was a lot of it was rights and other movies being made at the same time. It would have been perfect as out. Colossus. I mean, I mean, the dude was fucking back stacked then. back in the day. But I, mean, but I mean, like you look at Colossus and Deadpool, and he's basically the same thing. Yeah, and it makes sense with Jean Claude Van Damme because Jean Claude Van Damme, I swear, that dude's got some weird moves. I mean, he did the splits with a truck and everything. Yeah, and his, uh, and fun fact his, about. John Claude Van Damme. You guys know he was a ballet dancer before he was a martial artist, right? Yep. Uh, it would make sense in double. That would make sense in the film Double Impact when he's doing that dance scene. It's all right. huh. Well, that's that's why he's so flexible. That's why he's able to yeah. do. That. And yeah. plus, he wouldn't have had to fake an accent like uh, what's his name in X Men Two. Oh, with Cummings, yeah. No, yeah. yeah, he wouldn't. <laughs> he wouldn't have to fake. He wouldn't have to fake an German accent when he's when Cummins is a Scottish actor. Yeah, and uh, Van Damme's from Brussels, so it would have been close enough. Yeah, yeah. there was and, and there the, was a lot dude, of that. The, oh, I was gonna say the dude who played Colossus in the X Men movies didn't even have an accent. So I mean, like, and he was only in like two scenes. But oh, yeah. oh that poor kid, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially in the first one, I can help. No, you can't take care of them. You know, it's like, oh wait, where, where, wait, what, what are you doing? You know, for yeah, anyone who knows. Yeah. For anyone who's watching this, another fun fact, it's not really a fun fact, but mo a lot of movies were known for doing that. The Mortal Kombat uh, Annihilation film, they did that with such characters as Scorpion, Sub-Zero, mm. uh, Nightwolf. Yeah. You, you see them in one scene. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, 
the guy who the actor who played as Nightwolf, he also who I think I think it was later on or before that he was play, he played as Little Bear and Indian in the cupboard. Yeah, oh. uh, what's his name? MC something or other. He had a rapper name. I can't. I, I'm trying to blank. You know what it is, Brandon? No, actually, I don't. And I, it's been a while since I've seen it, so I uh, I don't okay. remember his name. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. But I know who you're talking about, though. Yeah. Annihilation. Oh, what a travesty that was. Oh, yeah. Oh, the movie was terrible. Uh, oh, yeah. his name is Lightfoot. That's his name. Lightfoot. Yeah, MC Lightfoot. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I, a buddy of mine pointed out because I did a review. Uh, we did a review on Mortal Kombat Annihilation. At the very end of the credits, one of, the, one of their <laughs> one of their uh, special uh, things is to oh god, is to a hair care product company, L'Oreal. Oh, probably. Look at Nitro's hair as Motaro, man. He he was fabulous looking. Everybody, you know, they all... <laughs> we were we were joking. It's like, okay, so that's where uh, half of MK Annihilation's budget went to just L'Oreal hair care products. Hair. Ex- explains why. Uh, Sonia Blaze hair looks all nice and clean after her mud fight scene with uh Shiva and Sindel have like perfect hair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Like, oh, so the, so that's how uh Sonia Blade was made it made her hair look nice after her fight with uh Melina, the mud fight scene. Yeah, so um speaking of annihilation, the the woman that played Sindel, uh I had seen her without realizing it like two or three times in the, in the late eighties and early nineties, uh, you know, she was one of those, that women, mm-hmm. but she was in, um, oblivion and oblivion Two, which were like, you know, Corman spacey. Yeah. They're actually, they're Charlie band movies, but they had some special, great fit, special effects, much like arena. And she also played a reverend mother in the Dune 2000 game that came out. Oh, nice. I yeah, know, I didn't know there's a game based off of Dune. Oh yeah, but there's it's multiple. I, ha- I have, I have all of them, from the original Cryo Dune to Dune Two, because I used to work for Westwood Studios as a game tester. Emperor Battle for Dune. We also have the open Dune RA stuff now and everything. Yeah, Brandon's really into it too. They're actually yeah. really good RTS games, man. Um, yeah, I love them. Did, did you see the announcement for the new Dune game? He's already. Uh, he's got the demo. And stuff already. You gotta get the demo. Oh, oh, are you yeah. referring to the so open good. world one, or yes. are you talking about? Oh, the, oh, uh, the open world, not that yet. Oh, the the MMO open world one. Yeah, yeah, it, that one got uh, I mean, my eye. I look forward to that. Yeah the the trailer looks good. Again, we don't know what the gameplay looks like yet because it was a it was a cinematic reveal. But I mean, still, just the 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 tone. Yeah, really catches like you know uh, the Dune film. Which uh, that that new Dune film? I'm I'm excited for Dune too. It's it's. I still need to watch the. I still need to watch the original Dune and the 2020. You, uh, you don't really need to. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, like, I'm a I'm a stickler. I mean, I had to do that. With... It's it's worth it. I mean, I've got uh first through third printings of the first book, illustrated Dune, multiple copies of all of them. I, I I've been a huge Dune fan since mm-hmm. way before the movie and came out, and I went and saw that in the theater too. Um. It is fine for what it is. It's fun and fine. You can't go into it with the purest mentality. So you might like it if you're not a big fan of the books. This new one, I wish they had kept in the scenes that they showed, which I don't know why they didn't. Like the extended scene between Paul and the Reverend Mother. So I'm open to anybody having any ideas on that one. And I can't find anything out because it's in the trailer. Unless they make it a flashback in the second movie. Which is fine with me. But you Mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about? The long speech and all that stuff that was lifted right from the book. There's a few things missing. But I love all the additions. I don't care about the gender swapping like everybody was making a big issue out of. It was about as good as it could possibly get for the story. And Denny is a fantastic filmmaker. I, oh, I, yeah. I, no. I, I mean, I, I loved his take on, um, God, what was the first movie he just did? Uh, 2077. What was it called? Uh, Not Arrival. That's the other one. No. Oh, uh, oh what? The, the Cyber the, movie, man. What the hell is it called? Uh, the French one. No, not the oh. French one. It was it was the movie that got him this movie, man. Uh, I'm forgetting the name, and I shouldn't be forgetting this name what's, right now. What's the uh, director's name? Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. <laughs> and it's spelled Denis Villeneuve or Nouveau, whatever. I don't know. It's French. <laughs> it's French. It's all that, yeah, it's like <laughs> crazy Paris talk, right? <laughs> oh, Denis uh, Villeneuve. Yeah, Canadian filmmaker. Canadian, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Blade Runner 2049. 
Blade Runner. That's what yeah, I'm trying the, to. The, 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 oh. Yeah, the sequel to oh. uh, the Blade Runner. Okay, okay, I was like, yeah, which that was a good one. I was saying it was it was good. I was not expecting it to be that good. You know, like I, I like where they picked up. I like that they, uh, you know, it, it takes place years after the original movie. Yeah. Uh, it, it fits really well. You know, they, uh, they they address a lot of the things from the first from the first original movie. Um, now, the, the original Dune, man, uh, I didn't realize how star studded that was. But oh, what what? <laughs> threw me off on that because I, I watched it again before watching the new dune mm-hmm. um and just re- not remembering how hard that movie was to follow <laughs> you know it it's it, it, it goes at about four thousand miles an hour and gives you a hundred a thousand percent and all in about 20 minutes i mean you know it it, it there's because they tried to do so much exposition so much of the first three books in one film they're to the point of the voiceovers, this and that. Um, you know, fun fact about Dune, since we're doing this fun facts thing, the TV edit, and I'm not talking about the extended cut. I'm talking about the TV edit. Right. Actually got to the point to where they had those uh, art pages and a voiceover to explain the goddamn movie before it started to give you some idea of this universe. And then still had Princess Airlines intro, which is nothing but an exposition dump. And mm-hmm. then... Paul's little exposition dump when he's reading the film book because otherwise I think uh, that uh, uh, Dino De Laurentiis' daughter had said nobody understood what the hell was going on because David just threw you right in and he never read the book. I think he made it about a chapter in and was basing most of his stuff off of the Yodorowsky Dune that, oh my God, what a movie that would have been. Uh, so he was just like doing his own thing. Hence why you had those weird ass weirdy modules and you know the music was all over the place and the tone. But that TV edit added like an extra five or six minutes just in the beginning to basically literally spoon feed you information because that, like you just said, it's like, what the hell is going on? What is this? What the hell is this guy talking about? Who the hell is this guy right. looking at? Yeah, it was, it well, was cause like the advantage that someone like Danny Villeneuve has is he's really good at world building. He's really good at putting yep. the story together in a way where you understand where the world is, is built. And that's what I love about him tackling Dune because it's like, you know, Star Wars executed that so well, right? Is is building a world without explaining anything, and you just with kind of with, with exceptions, world. right? But, but what, what I'm saying, <laughs> world building in in Star Wars, you know, was based on the world building in Dune, and yeah. the way that Denny Villeneuve did the world building, it's like you're thrust in this world, but nothing feels like it's out of place. Nothing feels like it's like okay, well, I don't know what the hell just happened. Like it's kind of like oh, okay, yeah. you're you're learning with the Atreides and it's kind of like, okay, so this is house Atreides and this is, um, you know, these are the, the, the Harkonnens and everything. Yeah, like these that. guys are obviously from the guild. These guys are obviously the side car, that kind of stuff. Oh, absolutely. Right. Uh, when Brandon and I watched it, when it premiered, it, had you just finished the first book, Brandon, or were you on to the second, not on to the second? Uh, one? I think I was on to the second book by that point. Okay. So having read the book and then watching that movie, did you have that same sense of uh, exposition feeling like what Phil's saying that you could walk right in and feel it? Because Denny said he wrote it as if uh, and directed it as a fan with a couple okay. exceptions. Yeah, there. Um, I'd, I'd say so. I don't feel like I really needed all that exposition for that one. Like even say the, uh, that dinner scene with the big political party, uh, I don't feel like you really needed that. So it's fine not having it there. You still got an idea of where they was at and who was who, especially with like the Sada car. You know, they're very intimidating, pretty, pretty obvious there. And the Harkonnens with the dark mood lighting, um, that interesting spider creature. But yeah, it just, it set itself up really well for what needed to be where uh, and not having like the scene inside the guild ship you didn't really need to see the uh the guild space fairs big True. ship get your point a to point b didn't really need need that at all right and and i felt like stellan skarsgård as uh as as Baron oh. Conan, man he he <laughs> killed that role man like just oh definitely he 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 frightened me and that's what i want out of that character like when you read him when you read that character in the book it's like this dude has to be just terrifying to 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 look at and when you see him on screen he he executed that perfectly which is weird if you think about that phil because you know 
Wayne, there's another fact about all this stuff. In the Dune book, they really emphasize his sexuality. Oh, yeah. And he's he's very homosexual, but at the same time, he's very animal, which, once again, there's nothing wrong with because it, it actually sets a lot of interesting concepts and uh, payoffs later on in the series. But at the same time, he is like one of the most ruthless bastards on the planet. He's hyper intelligent. And I'm not saying that you can't be gay and be smart, but what I'm saying is they portray him on opposite extremes that none of that really matters what his core is is um he's just a ruthless animal and that that's a big part of the, the universe too and but he in the in the medium of the book a lot of it's verbalized and like right. what phil is saying visually stellan was just looking at the camera and it's like oh dear god quit looking at me i can't watch this fast forward fast forward <laughs> he looks like he doesn't like, talk he doesn't fucking say anything to like 90 percent of his uh his on screen time and when he does <laughs> it's it's horrifying and they did the same thing with the Sada car. They don't say shit either. And in the book, they talk quite a bit, you know, about what they are. And all you get is that hamburger, cheeseburger, hamburger thing, you know, in the, in the, um, when they show yeah. the Seleucus Secondus, but that's all you need. Visually, <laughs> he set it up where you don't need 30 minutes of exposition. Uh, and it was uh, interesting way to, to see that done. Same thing with Duncan. They really went overboard with him as opposed to uh, some of the other pre uh, representations, like even the sci-fi movies and stuff. But that's fine because he's so important later on. I'm mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. But yeah, I, I'm right there with you, Stellan. It was just like, dude, you didn't even have to talk. Just the way he looked <laughs> and the little subtle things with his hands on his mouth when he's at and it's like, oh, you, you oily, gross, nasty <laughs> bitch, man. Oh, it was, it was good. Before it, we go, uh, monster, nasty, just crap beast. <laughs> Before we go back to Phil, uh, Brandon, um, yes? any fun facts that you may know that we may not know or everyone else may know or may not know? Since we haven't got to really you you yet on here because you know this this all, series, this series good. Is never, yeah I, never scripted. Um, let's see. Well, and so going for, to comic books, uh, one some of the interesting stuff is uh, I've been getting these volumes of Spawn, so I I'm missing volume three, but they're like the full collections of the, the comic books. So I've found out like. So Angela was, was originally a Neil Gaiman character, and uh, X-Men actually has the rights to Angela now. So she's actually an X-Men character. I think she is Colossus's sister, but uh, I guess there's a whole bunch of legal issues with some of the character usage. Like, it was supposed to be a one-and-done type thing with Angela on some stuff. Uh, Todd McFarlane kept pushing, and then there's a whole legal battle. Uh, I forget what the mobster was you probably remember dad uh he was based off of was a hockey player or something like that that he didn't like his uh likeness being used or is his a name remember him talking about vaguely that was that was early on uh i think that was i can't remember yeah i can't remember his name but there is some issues with that uh, well, yeah. back then, Image Comics was young and hungry, and they didn't really care about much of anything. You know, uh, Liefeld's an example of that, and unfortunately, Jim Lee was smart enough to do his own thing, and so was Wells. But I didn't know that about Angela. I don't know if you guys did or not. I, I mean, I read the books when they first came out, but I, I had no idea she was originally a new game character. Seen, I've only read, I've only read, I've only seen the uh, animated TV show back in the '90s where Keith oh, okay. David voice Spawn. Oh. And I've, I've only and I've only seen the 1997 movie which i found out mcfarland wanted to uh, do a quote-unquote reboot but make it more like jaws where you really didn't see where you really didn't see the main character yeah we well, mcfarland's we been trying to work on that and that's the whole thing is mcfarland right now wants to do it like the original comic book where it's mostly based on the two detectives and not so yeah. much like and you kind of just see spawn every now and then kind of kind of like the original godzilla right like you kind of like you see glimpses of godzilla in the background but you don't uh, uh, you don't really see him through the whole movie. Um, what what were the what were the detective names? It Twitch was, and what uh, was the other ones, Brandon? Sam and Twitch. Yeah, Twitch, Twitch. and yeah, it was Sam and Twitch. Yeah, uh, that's Sam. Yeah, and and, and uh, FX was doing a series for a little bit that ended up getting uh, canned. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, just there's 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 so much for Spawn. Like, I mean, I. I, the only, I think the most redeeming part of that, if we're going to go to the 97 movie, was was, uh, 
John Leguizamo's uh, characterization of clown of, of the violator sure. of the violator the violator. Uh, <laughs> I I that was probably like the only thing that attracted uh, me. I saw I saw behind the scenes thing on the DVD of the the fat suit and the makeup and the contacts and the teeth that Leguizamo was like putting like that. You're you gotta be fucking sweating. But Dude. when that. Yeah. Oh, oh, that. Yeah, and I think that was Steve Johnson that did that because uh, he had just done the Weird Al Yankovic uh, fat and and stuff. Uh, so he had that big fat suit stuff knocked down pretty good. I uh, remember when that was getting hyped up in like Starlog magazine, you know, because magazines used to come in paper form and you open mm -hmm. them up and stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, and um, I think I even think Fangoria had featured a couple of things on it. And uh, you know, the first couple shots of that suit were amazing and it's like okay this is going to be cool and todd's interviews and stuff here and there was talking about well realistically you know a guy can't have a 20 foot cape because he'll trip over it and wrap around stuff so that because people are asking why didn't we see the cape and he says it's going to come out when it needs to and it's like oh interesting take and it's from the todd father so this would be okay what brandon was saying with angela makes sense now too because she's technically in the movie but you don't really get introduced in that party scene she comes walking right. by with the earrings Right. I didn't know that there was legal stuff attached to her because she was in the books all over the place. Hell, I've got a couple of her action figures. I didn't know that. But mm -hmm. uh, that one, I think, fell victim to if you want to do this, Todd, you got to do it our way if you want the money. And it was a studio thing, despite what anything else comes out. And it's unfortunate because always the subject matter. Always a copyright issue. Yeah. yeah well, the stuff he's doing now is with Blumhouse. So, I mean, like, yeah, like, which is fine. They don't, they don't care. Look what they pump out, man. They yeah, pump out a lot fantastic. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, so I guess the whole thing is he said he wants it to be a horror film. He wants it to be, uh, um, he wants it to kind of be like a noir slash horror film. I'm, I'm like, down with that. That'd be yeah. pretty cool. We back to the anniversary figures one. for that reason. Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, I like I said, I remember in, a, in an online or an interview or something, he was wanted to say, like you said, we wanted to be like Jaws, where you don't see, really see the character. You see, like you said, glimpses, and then like close to the end, it's like you finally see him. And there's some about how he's wanting to get Keith David to voice that Spawn too. Yes, yes, please. Keith David did like the best characterization of Spawn, which was uh, uh, the, the the '90s cartoon. Yep, and then Michael Jai White played, you know, the fil the physical <laughs> Al Simmons. He tried. The, the the suit the suit wasn't bad. I know it was like no, I know like with the '90 late with the late with the '90s it was good for a '90s movie. With, yeah, and with anyone with anyone who's watching again, not really a fun fact, but common '90s superheroes. Late nineties, early two thousands, all superheroes were wearing leather, including yeah. including Tim Burton's um, never released film of Superman that was starring Nicolas Cage. The suit was rubber. Well, that's not entirely accurate because there was the clear suit with the crazy LEDs and the phosphorescent and stuff, but it was going to be the black suit, and then it would switch over. Mm -hmm. And if you see the test footage on that, it's really I, weird. It did have, have that weird it. rubbery look. Um, they were trying to pump out every property they possibly could because there was potentially money in some of those. And, you know, that's where we got that god awful Mark Salinger Captain America movie, which oh, went straight to video. Yeah. Oh, rubber ears. Literally, rubber ears, not I the little saw, feathers. I, His ears were rubber. I, I saw, saw that. that. It's, yeah. It seems to be common with a lot of. It was crazy. And then it, they weren't really making any money. And these properties were like getting tossed around for a dime. And it was because of Michael Apted getting the rights to Batman that we started seeing a resurgence of all these uh, serious comic book stuff. And then, you know, Frank Miller doing his writing with the Dark Knight Returns and some of the oh, other stuff. Yeah. Which but like, I would movie since has been based on one way or another has been based on Dark the Dark Knight. Yeah, because you can't beat it, man. I mean, that yeah. first book was fantastic. I actually, uh, honestly, I actually, I actually own, I actually own the, the, the full version of Frank Miller's Dark Knight. I mean, I haven't had the chance to watch oh, both part one and part oh, two of the, of the animated movie. They, they changed the fight scene at the end for a reason because we've already seen it a hundred times animated, but read the book. Uh, it's, I, it's, I will definitely. It's incredible. That That's why but what I, I was going to say, after like a that. while, you started seeing superhero trends tank and everybody's going back to watching some of this stuff with a little bit more of a, I like a, just nostalgia feel, but nobody's taking it seriously. 89 came and went, and then it, you know, because then we had the Punisher, the Dolph Lundgren, Dolph who Lundgren. was like, what, I, three, oh, three quarters yeah, asleep. I'm so glad through someone that brought that, brought with that up. The little me. drawn on beard, and he was like half asleep through the first half and three quarters asleep through the back half of that movie and talked like this the whole time. Yeah, for and anyone I who knows, don't... Dolph Lundgren was the first live Ooh. action, um, oh. was the first oh. live action uh, Punisher, and the and the, <laughs> and the, and the villain, and the villain, <laughs> and the villain was a female of the Yakuza who would kidnap, it, it, who would kill, who would kill, that kidnap, threw, 
who would kidnap razor children. earrings and shit, man. It who was, would kidnap uh, uh, oh, children yeah. of uh, of uh, mob of mob bosses? The the worst version of Frank Castle. <laughs> yeah, it was just weird seeing. Uh, and I know usually you know Frank Castle has what dark brown hair, black hair, black typically, and, and then it was, and then Dolph Lundgren comes in with like blonde, poorly dyed, spray dyed hair and stuff. But what I'm saying is, you know. All you know, or, or the Hoff is Nick Fury. Him. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And I was just gonna say, Hasselhoff is Nick Fury. Uh, <laughs> which at that time he looked like the comic Nick Fury, mm-hmm. which is fine. It was okay. But so many of these were coming and going. The Wait. Flash TV series tried. It didn't do so well. And it wasn't until somebody took Blade seriously because they're like one of these nickel freaking properties that you can buy, you know, the rights to. They took a serious attempt at it. And that's like, oh my God, we can make some money off of this stuff. uh, What film company did the Blade films? Uh, New Line. Yeah, New Line. New Line, who also did, who also did uh, Spawn. Mm -hmm. New Line Mm -hmm. did a lot of like comic book movies back in the nineties because they didn't have any money. And and, and, and 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 video, they did comics, video games. Yeah, because at the time, like I said, it was uh, they weren't really. They were kind of like early Miramax, you know. uh, Not to bring up. The Weinstein's or anything, but these guys, these these studios were pumping out crap left and right because they didn't have a lot of money. They were using Lacey Street and stuff to, to film like Leprechaun, the first Leprechaun saw uh, a whole gang of films were all filmed in the same two rooms in a Lacey Street studio. Mm-hmm. So like the bedroom in Leprechaun is actually Adam's apartment in Saw. So you know things like that, and these they were grabbing these these semi popular properties or ones that they could go crazy with because they already had a, a, a backstory like Blade whatever who was like third or fourth string character made a serious movie about it and then that's how we got Spider-Man and then the rest is history from there yeah so, God, you, know, you know you know what's yeah. funny is is uh they're doing a Halloween special uh and Werewolf by Night is supposed to be in it which is uh between Werewolf by Night and Dracula that's where Blade got introduced in the comics yeah. like yeah. it's funny that now it's becoming round robin because they're they're they, you know they technically introduced blade in the mcu but i mean like he he uh he hasn't been seen you just heard his voice yeah uh, but i mean like you know now they they're talking about oh yeah we're doing a halloween special it's i think it's either this year or next year i don't remember what what, what it was i know they've been working on it already though uh and and werewolf by night is supposed to get introduced they're supposed to introduce a whole bunch of like uh of those those universal licensed characters that they did in the 70s you know and and well there's a lot of them no what's next though the kung fu adventures and some of that stuff i mean you know they had (laughs) hercules like that there's there's a bunch of them i mean hercules is coming they already they already introduced him in in thor so i mean yeah that's what i mean it's just like you know what's next give them their own shot i wonder wonder if they're gonna have not to make a joke here what if they're gonna have arnold schwarzenegger play as hercules (laughs) Well, I fantastic. don't know. I mean, if anyone's seen the, if anyone's seen the 1970 Hercules film, you'll know that reference. Oh, yeah. Hercules in New York or Hercules New York, bananas, depending on which version you see. Great. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, back, to, uh, back to Phil. Any more fun facts you got for us, Phil? Uh, man, I had one in my head a second ago, and now it's gone. Oh, um, so we were talking about Neil Gaiman. Right. And we're talking mm-hmm. about, you know, Angela being a Neil Gaiman character, which again, fun fact, I didn't know that she was. Yeah. I had no idea. Uh, but Neil Gaiman. Um, so uh, have has everybody here watched a Sandman? No, no. I, I don't want to because I've read every single issue. Uh, it's, dude, it's, 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 it's similar but different. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, after the dollhouse and I had to sit and cry for about a month and a half. Oh, was, dude. Uh, yeah. Dollhouse is going to make you cry 10 times <laughs> more. Okay, and, and and just uh, the 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 scene in the uh, diner is way more brutal than it really? was. Okay, it's, it's dude, it's 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 good. It's I like uh, I, like I, I read those Neil came out. I've, I've I've heard Neil Gaiman has given his thumbs up approval of this. No, show. no, Neil Gaiman wrote this show. Really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He also, didn't, that, he also but... write, didn't he also write Lucifer the TV show as well? And that's where my fun fact was coming in right okay, here. So, go, go ahead. So, uh, so Lucifer uh, was recast in in the show, um, and mainly because there was a lot of people who had issues with the casting in this. But Neil Gaiman cast everybody directly himself, uh, and and he was saying like you know these are all the embodiments. If you actually look at the character, like uh, Lucifer in the comic is not supposed to be gendered at all. 
uh, where like a lot of people are like, well, he was a male. It was like, well, no, technically he didn't have a gender at all. Like, like Lucifer doesn't have a gender, and that's why they cast Gwendolyn Christie. Uh, and actually, what's crazy is if you look at Gwendolyn Christie in the in the show uh, and in the comic, they look identical. It's it's a crazy, but that show Lucifer uh, is based on that character from uh, from Sandman. Oh, really? is it really? It is the same character. I think you were telling hey. me that uh, um, when I was on your last podcast. Yeah, that is the same character. So a lot of people don't know that that character is uh, the same Lucifer from Sandman. Oh, it, I would have watched that then. I did. I passed on that just because I was like, eh, I don't care. You know, there's and, so and many of those popping out left and right. And they yeah. release every episode weekly, not like a whole season like Netflix usually does from what I've heard. Well, now Netflix releases the seasons as 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 a whole because you know once Fox canceled it and they picked it up, they they oh, yeah. you know I'm all- I'm I'm glad I'm glad um, Netflix took over. I wish they would have done the same thing for Gotham because I would have loved to see more. Gotham, that's <laughs> that <was laughs> with Gotham. Uh, I, I mean, on our on our webpage about that just because. Uh, my issue with Gotham was uh, they changed backstories for characters that didn't need to have their backstories changed. When and they, they were- couldn't get, and they couldn't get the licenses right to Joker, but they can get the right to Riddler. Well, but but I mean, like they 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 there were characters that they changed that they didn't need to, but there were characters that they needed to change that they didn't. Uh, there were I, I didn't feel like Bruce earned his right to be Batman uh, because he's Batman by the end of the series, and it's like. You're why you yeah. I, 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 I know like at the end of the series, like the final season, and they jumped like 10 years or so. But even then, like Bruce spends 20 years abroad learning the skills that he has. He learns how to be a magician, he learns how to be an escape artist, he learns how to be a, a, a freaking ninja, you know. Like, and, and these are not skills that you learn in like a year or two, you know. Like, these are things that it took him years. And then by yeah. the time he comes back to Gotham, he's in his 30s. So that's the yeah, whole if, yeah. I was just going to say, if you read uh, it, after the 89 Batman and we were talking about Frank Miller and they kind of rebooted the detective comic series before the Legends of the Dark Knight, mm-hmm. there was the year one and the year two and year three books. And then that's the one where, like, where he had the 45 up on his chest and all that yeah. stuff and everything by the time you got to that. What you're saying was mentioned then. That lore was already established. I mean, there's no reason to deviate from that because it works today just as well as right. it did then. You know, this cat loses his parents about nine or ten makes his decision, let's say by 11, that he's not going to ever let that happen to somebody else and has the means, methods, and, and ways to go do that stuff, takes off. Right. And then of those books, they were showing him getting shot in the thigh in a karate school, and he was learning how to, like, tighten his muscles up to push the bullet out and shit like that, you know, stuff that makes yeah. sense later on. I yeah, I'm totally that. with you. It's like, <laughs> you, oh, yeah, it was great. In year two, he got shot dead in the thigh with a 45, learning, uh, practicing martial arts, and he's uh, the, the master's telling him, Okay, what did you practice? And then he's like, like tightening up his thigh muscle and he's pushing a bullet out. Right. You know, uh, because he was talking shit, about how to avoid pain. There was there was all this setup and explanation for why when he came back and he even said in year one, I've got tons of uh, methods. I just don't have the means. And that's where the, the suit came in later on because you know, he needed to scare the hell out of him because everywhere, everything else, he was a magician. He was uh, an escape artist. He was a uh, like best safe cracker on the planet but he'd taken all this time to go do that right and yeah this kid why skip that earn that why why jump it's not it's not fair to the character it's not fair to us why don't this show the other thing i didn't like about this show too and i gotta gotta, gotta, gotta get this last point out uh is they introduced super villains way too early in a way where they didn't need to be introduced edward Uh, touch well like, like not even that like um uh arkham asylum written by grant morrison uh, establishes oh. yeah, one of the best books ever written. But I mean, you know, Arkham Asylum by Grant Morrison establishes that the majority of these supervillains, their psychosis is a reverse because bat- of Batman psychosis. So and Bruce Dark Knight creates- Returns mentioned that too. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. Bruce creates his own villains. These supervillains uh, manifest because there's a Batman. And it's vice versa. There's a Batman because there's criminals. So it's like it's 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 a revolving circle. It's a revolving door, you know. Yeah. But the thing is, is in this uh in in this show, they like you have what really like put me off to it, and I was like I kept on giving it chances, but it, it just they didn't redeem themselves after that for me was when they introduced Asriel because I was like okay. I don't like the way they introduced Asriel. I don't like the way they did the character altogether. Um, you know, like and, and to the point where like. Poison Ivy was was a terrible characterization. Ivy Pepper, Ivy Pepper, right? I, I didn't I didn't like 
like, like it's Pamela Isley. I'm, don't don't deviate from Pamela Isley, right? She's she she's basically a eco terrorist that gets superpowers. The don't, animated show got it perfect, right? The Harley exactly. Quinn show. They um, so, come on. They, in the uh, in the TV show again, I think from what I found out, Fox couldn't get the licensing rights to these characters to certain characters. That's why Ivy Pe- that's why Poison uh, Pamela Isley's Ivy Pepper, who lives like in basically a, a poor living situation. Right. And, and I mean, like, okay, it's, like I said, I was saying like some of the backstories that they changed on people just didn't make sense versus the ones the, there were characters that they didn't, that, 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 that needed a backstory change that they didn't do anything with. And then the final grievance that I have with this show, Gordon never gets his mustache. And that's just, that's just trash for me. <laughs> when, when, when you have Jim Gordon with no, mu- with oh, that, man. without the iconic mustache, because yeah. season one, I'm like, is he going to grow the mustache? Is he going to grow the mustache? Why is he not growing the mustache? Where the hell is the mustache? Yeah, exactly. Season five, still no mustache. And, and the, mu- the mustache makes, the glasses and the mustache make Jim Gordon. But it's like season five, Gordon, no mustache, no gla- glasses, but he's fighting the Joker. Come on, dude. No, no. Sorry. You, you know what the excuse is going to be, and it's it's much like what they're gonna what they're doing with the uh, the Batinson and stuff too. It it's gonna be an elsewhere thing, much like with the Titans and stuff. It's not mainline DCEU. That's how they're gonna justify all that when everything yeah. goes under one house. That's all it is. I mean, I'm fine with that because. The multiverse gives you every opportunity in the world, and I'd right. like to see the medieval versions and like Awesome by Gaslight done seriously. You know, the cartoon yeah, was great. Uh, yeah, uh, that was- Bad Aztec that's coming out pretty soon. Like they're doing yeah. the Aztec version of Batman. Again, big deal for me being a Hispanic person that is really into my own culture. You know, yeah. like I'm 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 happy to see Batman as an Aztec. That sounds bad. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. I, it's uh, it's it's all great. But uh what I'm saying is like, you know, don't present it as a mainline story without the explanation like, oh, somewhere in the multiverse or somewhere else, yeah. you know, like the elsewhere for DC, you know, or meanwhile elsewhere, something like that. Set it fine. Then you can do whatever the hell you want. Change the names because they don't have to be the same name as the characterization comes out. But if you're presenting it in mainline, well then you just lost me. And that that that's I, I'm was- right there with you on that. This was supposed to be the okay. This is how Jim Gordon came up, and this is how Jim Gordon became, yeah. uh, uh, you know, the police commissioner. And it's like, well, no, you basically turned him into Batman. Yeah, and like I, that's not what I wanted. Which I would, would be fine too if you were going to present it that way early right. on. Yeah, there, there's an yeah. Elseworlds comic literally where Jim yeah. Gordon becomes Batman. Yeah, so and he there's wears one a, where he Alfred wears a, is Batman. He wears a uh, robotic Batman police suit, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's like yeah. blue and everything has lights. Yep. Yeah, I remember seeing yeah. a picture of that a few years yeah. back. And but there's the one, like I said, where Alfred Pennyworth is Batman, and there's one where Bruce's dad is. I mean, oh, that's fine. Present it that way. I, I think what had happened there, like they um, made Barbara a supervillain, and I'm like, come on, dude, are you serious? So we're yeah. never gonna get like he's never gonna have a daughter that is named Barbara, who is supposed to become Batgirl, who becomes an Oracle. Yeah, Oracle. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, Bar- Barbara was his uh, girlfriend, his first girlfriend. Well, but but I mean, there's there's different stories, like because in uh, uh, in Batman Year One. It was right? his wife's uh, name was Barbara. His yeah. wife's name was Barbara, and then they had a daughter, and her name was Barbara, right? Like they, like yeah. they basically named her after the, her mother. So it's like there are versions of Jim Gordon where Barbara Gordon is his wife, but they just named his daughter Barbara as Barbara, well. Barbara or Barbara is Alfred's niece. No, that's no. one. And that <laughs> and we we, we, we don't talk about that. We yeah, don't we don't talk about, about the Schumacher. <laughs> Schumacher. Schumacher. No, we're, we're not. Oh, Schumacher, okay. Not so you know show. what? Uh, the, the one thing I will say in existence. The one thing I will say about the Schumacher, and 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 it, it, it is fair enough to him. I used to meet you. You mentioned it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what destroyed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. If if any of you, fun fact here, if any of you have listened to the audio commentary, about ninety percent of that is an apology from Joel. I'm sorry, everybody. I thought I was making a good movie. I thought this was a comic book because he self-admitted never having read them. It was literally this scene. I I apologize for this is not what I thought it was going to be. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. So yeah, that audio commentary, like it's a little fun fact, is basically one big ass apology for the end result. I mean, rest, rest, <laughs> rest in peace to Joel Schumacher. But I felt oh, like absolutely. I, I felt like I felt like the uh, at the time I didn't realize it, but looking at it. Like with oh. the sound effects and the puns, like this, oh. is, this is like the 1960s Batman. No, series. And that's, that was the point. The whole point was they were trying to recreate 66 Batman within uh, uh, Tim Burton's world. Yeah, I, remember, can't do that. I remember, I remember, I remember, Tim, I remember Tim Burton like left halfway through because one, Mike, he wanted Michael Keaton to come back, 
and Tim mm-hmm. Burton was like, "What a producer or a writer!" And he just like he just like, you know, fuck you guys, I'm out of here. Yeah. Well, Tim's weird anyway, you know, and he has his own stuff going on, which is fine. Uh, I I didn't mind uh, forever so much. It was okay-ish, but you could see that turning point happening there. And then you know, if if you read or, or uh, any of the behind the scenes stuff or, or listen to the audio commentary, uh, that uh, Tommy Lee Jones and uh oh god and carrie oh yeah no they were pretty much at odds the whole time yeah, they yeah, kept no. trying to one-up each other yeah, and it's like jones, jones, jones jones obviously dated. did not know who who harvey dent was because no. like kind of like he from what i heard in another interview he was basically trying to outdo uh it. yeah um, carrie uh, no not carrie he was trying to outdo um uh joker man um oh Nick, nicholson. nicholson oh nicholson. yeah oh, okay i thought you were talking about nicholson. on set no, no, like his 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 choices in 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 Harvey Dent, where yeah. he was out, trying to outdo uh, Jack Nicholson, and and it's like, no, because that's not Harvey Dent. No. Harvey Dent was a DA that you know, like like he he has psychosis, but his his dual personality is more of a uh, I'm gonna murder everybody that gets in my way. Yeah, and- it's dark and darker. That's it. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> like again, the animated series did a perfect character. Oh. Yeah. And they yeah. actually expanded yeah. on his story and made him even more of a compelling character. Oh, I, yeah. I, I like. Yeah. I, I, uh, also, fun fact for those who who haven't watched it or have never read the book, the scene where it shows Harvey didn't having acid thrown on his face is a reference to the Long Halloween where Sal Maroney throws uh, co- uh, ass. I thought it was coffee. No, I, didn't it was, I didn't realize it was, it was acid. Just the, the, just, burn. just the way the just the way the color, <laughs> yeah, the way Harvey, burn. Harvey was protecting his face with the paper. Uh, the, the, it looked brown, so I thought it was hot. I thought it was hot coffee. I didn't realize, In the face with coffee. I didn't. I, I didn't realize it was acid. And then, like I said, after I saw the long Halloween, that's that gourmet film, shit. That's not even that instant stuff. When I saw man. the animated, right. uh, when I saw the animated long Halloween film, uh, good movie by the way. Yes. Oh yeah. Part two. Rest in peace to the actress who voiced uh, Catwoman. But yeah, it's like, wait, what is that? Oh, so that's what this. That's this, I didn't realize the Long Halloween was a comic, and I didn't realize the comic oh. came out in, like the late '80s, early '90s. Yep. Yes. Since, yeah. Hush. Court of Owls. Oh. Nightfall. All those really good ones. Long, Long Halloween. Calendar Man. Just like all the stuff that 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 happened in that. Like, I. Again, and this is just jumping around DC at this point, but I mean, uh, when when we saw Calendar Man show up in uh, in Suicide Squad, <laughs> you fucking I, pussy! I about lost, it, dude. I about lost it. Uh, I was not expecting, uh, of all people, his brother to show up, and because apparently he again, like he did in Guardians, he played dual characters because he was also Weasel, uh, but he played Calendar Man, and I'm just like. Yeah. No shit. They did. They did a Calendar Man reference. They did it. Uh, yeah. Funny, funny thing. The guy who played as uh, Polka Dot Man voiced Calendar Man in the animated. Uh, yes. Which I kind of, which I find, which I find hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Brian, that back to you. It, it, that, that, that's that's for a whole different podcast. Yeah. Uh, Brian, back <laughs> to you. Any uh, any fun nerdy facts that people may know that you know or we don't know or you know vice versa. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it's become more in, in light the past couple of years because of, uh, JK Rowling can't shut her mouth when mm. she needs to, <laughs> but, just, put, just, just put tape over her mouth. Let's yeah. <laughs> but you know, as far back as the, the first book, uh, John Carl Beekler and Charlie band and all those guys, uh, tried to sue her over the Harry Potter name because of their movie troll, which came out in the, in the mid eighties. A lot of people didn't realize good, that. Good, good movie, by the way. The oh, they're, I love they're, Troll. They're, That's they're, one of my absolute they're, favorites. They're quote unquote. Continue. Yeah, the, the the first Troll was one of my all time favorites, but uh, it wasn't just like that parallel thinking because there was uh, a lot of other aspects to that movie. You know, I mean, this becoming more and more common knowledge. But when I first found out about it, I was like, wow. When I read the Harry Potter, I was like, what's that? The kid from Troll and stuff. Uh, the, the the magical universe within ours, uh, the doorways, the the fairy folk. There was a lot of parallels, and they I they sued, and I don't know if it was a publicity thing or if they were generally pissed off. But she just said it was like convergent thinking, but between the names, the nature of the the magic, so the just, this just loves to piss a lot of people off. Yeah, and I uh, I I've always thought it was funny, and there was a. Uh, youtube channel uh, i listened to that it said the same thing it's like you know you never thought that the one person that that created 
and uh, so many fans would be the one to destroy them all. You know, it was the same person. I it just blows me away with Irony. that. Irony. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. But yeah, when I when I remember hearing about that with that lawsuit, I was like, oh, wow, okay. Because there's, you know, I read the first book. I thought it was cool and stuff. But to find out that there was so much of this borrowed here and there, and then that there was an actual lawsuit over that, starting with the name, and then the rest of it was all intellectual stuff. I I, I found that in, I mean, interesting and kind of a, a fun fact because it's like you know. I mean, speaking of, speaking of people pissing Harry Potter off, who, who here has seen the movie Drop Dead Fred? Oh, yeah. 